Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about a massive four-cylinder engine and a very cool turbocharger, a dual volute turbo that goes along with it. But first, I need to do a little trash talking because as an engineer, it is my duty to combat confusing marketing messages. So the engine we'll be discussing in this video is GM's L3B engine. GM describes it as developed specifically for truck applications. They say it is designed as a truck engine. They say this engine is a clean sheet design for Chevrolet and was developed from the outset as a truck engine. They say the long stroke design will help generate the strong low end torque customers expect in a truck. A fine summary is simply to say all elements of the 2.7 liter turbo were designed for the demands of turbocharged performance in a truck environment. If you were to ask me, I would probably guess that this engine is for trucks. And here's what you'll find it in. Oh goodness. Wait, wait, this isn't a truck. Or is it? If Mercedes can call a four-door SUV a coupe, well, then maybe a Cadillac sedan can be called a truck. I don't know the rules anymore. Regardless, this is a very cool engine and it has a very cool turbo, so that's what we're going to be talking about. So the L3B engine is an inline four cylinder. It has a stroke of 102 millimeters and a bore of 92.25 millimeters, which gives it a total displacement of 2.727 liters, which I believe is the largest gasoline powered four cylinder in a road car sold today. Historically, there definitely have been some larger gasoline uh, four cylinders and there are definitely larger diesel four cylinders sold today, but I think that is the largest gasoline one. Uh, let me know if you do know of one out there. I think the next closest is the Toyota Tacoma, which has a 2.694 liter uh, inline four cylinder engine. Uh, but as far as gasoline engine inline four cylinders goes, this is quite large. And the reason for that really comes down to two things. Packaging, uh, as you start to get larger, you might as well just use more cylinders. And then because the space won't be all that different, and then from a vibration standpoint, inline four cylinders start to get quite noticeable vibration as you get larger in size. So what GM does to combat this is they have two balance shafts underneath the crankshaft, uh, above the oil pan, below this engine. And so this is to combat secondary vibrations. If you wanna learn more about how balance shaft works, uh, I have a video which I will link in the video description, which you can learn all about why they have these balance shafts in there, but basically that eliminates the secondary forces that the pistons will be creating. So you will have two balance shafts located underneath that crankshaft, and these are rotating at two times the speed as the crankshaft. So the L3B engine is used in two different applications by GM currently. It is used in the Cadillac CT4V, and it is used in the Chevy Silverado, which is a truck. In the CTS-4V, it makes 325 horsepower, 380 pound-feet of torque using premium gas. In the Silverado, it's making 310 horsepower, 350 pound-feet of torque using regular gas. Now, one of the really cool things about this engine is that it uses a three-position camshaft. So if you've watched my video on variable valve lift, then you've seen a very similar mechanism in a Volkswagen engine where they use a cam slider to give different profiles that lift and close the intake and exhaust valves. And so in this engine, there are three different profiles for those intake valves. Right here, what we're looking at is two of these sliders for one individual valve. So really, there's gonna be two valves with each of these sliders, and this is going to be mirrored over for each of the four cylinders. And so you have these different profiles. You've got the slider here in this darker blue, and then these three different profiles which the intake valve can follow. So it's got this one on the left here that is a high lift, high duration profile. That's gonna give you the most power for those high load uh, uses when you're flooring it, things like that. Uh, then in the center, if you look at this one here, you have a lower valve and a lower duration. And that's kind of for your medium load area where you're going for more efficiency and optimizing airflow at lower RPM. And then finally, you'll notice that the third profile is different for this 
uh, intake valve versus for this intake valve. And so what's happening is for this third section of this cam slider, you're actually disabling the center two cylinders. So it's only running on cylinders one and four. And so for the second cam slider, it's gonna go to basically an off position so it doesn't open or close that intake valve. Same with the exhaust. The exhaust valve is gonna have two sliders for just the center uh, cylinders so that it will shut off the exhaust valves for these two center cylinders. So these will operate like normal, one and four, your firing order being one, three, four, two, so you're alternating between one and four, and the center two will basically just be air springs with that piston moving up and down. So this two cylinder mode can be useful when you're just cruising on the highway and trying to maximize your fuel efficiency. So what kind of highway fuel economy are we talking about here? Well, in the CT4V, you're getting 20 miles per gallon in the city, 29 miles per gallon on the highway. In the Chevy Silverado, this engine is giving you 20 in the city, 23 miles per gallon on the highway. Now, 23 miles per gallon may not sound all that impressive, but consider what fuel economy the 5.3 liter V8 that also goes in the Chevy Silverado gets on the highway. It only gets 24. 24 miles per gallon on the highway. To recap so far, a Cadillac sedan is a truck, a Mercedes genuine SUV is a coupe, and if you want the best fuel economy on the highway, get the V8. Now, regardless of whether this engine actually makes any sense or not, it does have a very cool turbocharger, a dual volute turbo. So what is a dual volute turbo? Well, it simply means that it has two volutes, one on top of the other. You may have heard of twin scroll turbochargers. These are fairly similar in principle, but they have two scrolls side by side rather than one volute on top of the other. So what's the advantage of doing something like this and what's the difference versus a twin scroll as far as advantage? are concerned. So looking at the engine block itself, the exhaust manifold is actually integrated within it. So you've paired up cylinders one and four, and you've paired up cylinders two and three. So cylinders two and three send their exhaust pulses to that top volute, and then cylinders one and four send their exhaust pulses to that bottom volute. And your firing order is one, three, four, two. And so you're alternating between which volute is actually getting that exhaust pulse. So if you look at a simplified drawing over here where we've stretched out that exhaust manifold, your firing order being one, three, four, two, and you can see that first cylinder has fired, the second cylinder is in the other volute, and so its pulse is over here. And so the whole idea and why you're doing this is you're separating those exhaust pulses so they don't interfere with one another, so that you don't have positive pressure from one of these going back into one of the cylinders that's opening up next. So you split them up, one, three, four, two, and then you don't have to worry about that valve overlap, and as a result, you get better response, you get better low end torque, and you get better efficiency out of this dual volute turbo. Now, whether it's a dual volute or a twin scroll turbo, both of them use this exact same strategy here of splitting the cylinders to optimize turbo response. When you press down on that accelerator pedal, how long does it take to actually get that turbo spooled up? And so the difference here is how these exhaust gases are entering and hitting that turbine and spinning up the compressor wheel. And so with this dual volute, you're entering on opposite sides of that turbine versus with the twin, twin scroll turbo, you're actually entering together to hit that turbine. And so you have a little overlap here where exhaust pulse from one can travel into the other chamber. And so there's a bit of an inefficiency there where this is going to allow more energy to actually reach that turbine and spool it up. So typically it's going to have better response because you're splitting where it actually enters that turbine, where it's hitting it and where it's rotating from. Another difference is the distance from this turbine housing to this turbine itself. So with this dual volute turbo, you can bring the edge closer to that turbine wheel because you're not splitting that area right in the middle. And so these will, with twin scroll turbochargers, be about five millimeters from the turbine blades versus here with this dual volute design, apparently you can get about one millimeter away from that turbine blade. And so as a result, it's going to be more efficient, better response, you're getting more of that energy to hit it. And so as a result, the turbo spools up faster and you get your torque sooner. So how much sooner? Well, Chevy says with the Silverado engine, if you're at 1500 RPM and you floor it, it takes 1.93 seconds to get to 
90 percent torque so you're getting nearly peak torque in about two seconds at 1500 rpm which is a very low engine speed so it is impressive that it's able to spool up that quickly at such a low rpm however is it impressive versus say a chevy bolt which can get peak torque like that perhaps not so I don't know why I'm excited about this engine but it is very cool the technology involved and the improvements that it creates thank you all so much for watching and if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below